Okay, so now let's take a look at how virtual functions and, and pure virtual functions work in C++. So I'm going to use these later. And just to avoid wordiness, I'm going to go ahead and put using namespace standard at the top. That's just to avoid having to do it all throughout the code. So I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this class super. First, I'll have a constructor. And this function is not going to do anything, but I am going to print out that I'm calling the super constructor. And this is just so I can see where this gets called. And I'm going to avoid putting a destructor here because I'm not going to be allocating memory and I just want to keep this clear. So I'm going to create three methods here and I'll call the methods what they are. So my non-virtual method, is just going to print out super non-virtual. Then I'm going to have a virtual method and it'll print out virtual. And I'll come back to the pure virtual once I'm done defining everything. So this is my super class. It's going to have a constructor and then two methods, and we'll add a third later once we talk about pure virtual methods. Now I'm going to create a subclass. It looks like we made the same mistake with the semicolon in our superclass. And it's going to inherit from the superclass, so I don't want to forget that. And let's just go with this for now. So in my main, I'm going to have a superclass, and we'll just call that super object. And we'll have a subclass for subobject. And in our class, we'll call superobject dot non-virtual. We'll call superobject virtual, and we'll actually do the same with the sub. Okay, well, let's compile this. I think I have the C plus plus seventeen standard on this machine. So we have some error. Oh, now normally I would not want to do this, but I'm going to make everything public just to make it easier to work with. And when I run my code, notice the super constructor gets called twice. That's interesting. And the reason is, is because it gets called once when I create my super object, it gets called again when I call my sub object. So we'll do a different video with how inheritance works for now. At this point, I'm just assuming you know that, but if you don't, there's an example in a different video. So this is creating my subclass, then you'll notice I call all these methods. Okay, so that part's not very interesting yet. I'm going to call this virtual one. And the reason for that will make sense in a moment. So my superclass is going to have, I'm going to create a virtual two method. And in my subclass, I'm going to override the virtual two method from the parent class, the superclass. I guess to be consistent, I should make this super and I should make this sub and I'll make sure that I call both functions. One thing you don't want to do is call the wrong function because then your code won't do what you expect. So let's compile. That looks good. Okay. Very good. So now we can see that the super class calls these three methods. We get the output we want for the subclass. We get the supers methods for non-virtual one and virtual one, but not for virtual two. For virtual two, the sub has its own method, and so that's what gets called. Okay, so let's create some pointers. Actually, that won't be interesting to do the super object, so we'll just make both of these point to the sub object. And let's print what we're doing here. Let's do this for the pointer as well. We're gonna do the same, the same things, however, we're going to do it with a super pointer. To do that, we use the arrow notation, and we'll do the same thing with the sub pointer. And we won't see a lot of difference yet. And I have the wrong name here. And so you can see, we call the constructors, we set up everything, and then we call the super object methods, the sub object methods, and everything is essentially what we'd expect. So now we're going to have two virtual methods and two non-virtual methods. And for the non-virtual method, I'll overload that in the subclass. And let's make sure we're calling that. So all I'm doing is just copying that and changing the number. So coming from Java, everything should make sense at this point. But now when I run this, 
I have one overloaded virtual method, one overloaded non-virtual method. So everything's the same here. It's what we would expect. And here, notice we've overloaded both two methods, the non-virtual two and virtual two. So we call that from the subclass. But now in our sub object, notice using a super pointer, a pointer that's of the parent class type, you'll notice that it calls the super classes method for non-virtual two. It's not a virtual method. So the type of the pointer determines what method gets called. For a sub pointer, a pointer to the actual type of the object, we call all of its methods for virtual methods. So if a method is virtual or non-virtual, we would call the subclass method if we use the subclass pointer type. But if we have a superclass pointer type for non-virtual methods, we call the superclasses non-virtual methods. But the virtual methods, we would still call the subclass method. We're about to have to get rid of this code and this code. And I'll leave this in here so that you can see the error that happens. What happens if I make a pure virtual method? So the way I do that is I say virtual void, and we'll call this pure virtual. We say that it's equal to zero. Now, none of these methods have parameters. There's no reason that we couldn't add parameters to these. We're just keeping that away because we're not using parameters. We're trying to keep the code concise. We're focused on how the method calls work, not anything else. But there's nothing magical about the fact that none of these methods have no parameters. We could have parameters, no big deal. To make this a pure virtual method, I don't just declare it virtual. I also set it equal to zero. Now watch what happens when I try to compile. I get some errors that I cannot declare variable type super object to be of abstract type super. By making this a pure virtual method, this is now an abstract class and I can't instantiate it. So let's take away this instantiation and I'll comment it out so that you can try it on your own. Now when I compile, cannot declare variable sub object to be of abstract type sub. Now sub doesn't have any pure virtual methods on its own, but it is inheriting this from super. So I have to define this method in the subclass to prevent the subclass from being abstract like the parent. And again, the pure virtual is the name of the function. This is not a pure virtual method anymore because I'm defining it. And just to show you, we'll call it with each of these. So now when I run, notice there is no more super object. There's just the sub object. And again, we never overrode non-virtual one or virtual one. So those still get called from the super class. Even though it's an abstract class, it has implemented methods. Everything else comes from sub. When we use the super pointer, then all of the non-virtual methods in super pointer are going to be used because those still exist in my sub class. They're just super class methods. And when I use a super class pointer, those are the methods that would get called. But the pure virtual method would have to come from the sub because even though this is a super pointer, it knows about that method because it's declared in the super class. It's not unaware that it exists. It's just not defined in the super class but it is defined in the subclass, so we can access it through the super pointer. And it calls the subclasses method named pure virtual. So again, these names, that's not what these methods are in the subclass, it's what they are in the super class. Keep that in mind, this is not a pure virtual method because you can't call a pure virtual method, it's just a method named pure virtual. And so that is a quick overview of virtual, non-virtual, and super methods. I'll put a quick comment in here Okay, so for a non-virtual method, the type of the pointer determines the method that gets called. And for a virtual method, the type of the object determines the method that gets called. And then for vir pure virtual methods, they must be overridden by any non-abstract derived class. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to virtual, non-virtual, pure virtual functions in C++. And we'll see some more examples in the next videos.